Hey guys, Brian from RVing Illustrated here. Just wanted to do a little talk while I'm uh, driving on my way home from work. Uh, driving through the city of Charlotte, North Carolina right now. Uh, I don't know how much of it you'll be able to see. You might see a little bit behind me. But anyway, today I just want to talk to you about, uh, you know, the best type of RV for you to have. And, uh, I just want to go on record and say this before I even start there is no best RV out there for anybody um, you might have one that's a little bit better for you or better suited for you and your family but there is no best overall RV out there um, you know some things especially for the new RVers out there or those who are maybe looking into uh, to RVing uh, you know things to uh, take into consideration is uh, if you're interested in towing something uh, like towing a trailer or a fifth wheel or a pop-up uh, do you have a suitable vehicle to tow with do you have a truck or a SUV large enough that's rated uh, large enough and that can pull your uh, the trailer or the fifth wheel or a pop-up wherever you want to tow um, you want to look at the the trailer too you want to look at see what the uh, you know what the weight is what the requirements what the dry weight what the wet weight is uh, there's diff different a lot you know things to look at there um, you want to look at size uh, how big is your family uh, where are you going to go RVing to are you going to primarily go to RV resorts or parks with full hookups are you going to go to state parks or national parks where you might have limited hookups such as electric or electric and water um, are you going to boondock or dry camp where you know you're going to kind of be off the grid and you're not going to be able to uh, to have those electrical hookups um, what size tanks are you going to need uh, if you're doing dry camping and off the grid type stuff you're going to want larger tanks on your uh, on your RV so I mean being fresh water gray water and black water because you're not going to have to dump uh, very often um, you know, if you got hookups it really doesn't matter you can dump every day um, if you need to if you have really small tanks but there's a you know, there's a lot to, to look at into there <clears throat> Um, if you want a, you know, a motorhome, uh, my preference, you know, we've had a pop-up, we've had a travel trailer, large travel trailer, um, one that was a 31 foot model, but it was 35 feet from the back bumper to the front hitch. Um, it was a large, heavy one. It, the gross weight on it was 11,000 pounds. So we had to have something large, like an F-250 or larger to pull it. And that's what we end up having to buy. We didn't have a, a tow vehicle to to uh, pull it with, so we end up having to buy uh, an F-250. We bought a, a Super Crew cab, um, had a, a towing capacity of I think it was 12,500 pounds. You know, had to do the whole a uh, weight distributing hitch thing, sway bars. I mean, just uh, different type of things like that that you have to you have to look at and look into. Um, it's just more than going and, and hooking up to your bumper of your uh, your truck or to the hitch of your truck. Um, the Class C that we have now, motorhome, uh, my personal opinion is it's a heck of a lot easier to drive the Class C motorhome even when we're towing a car. Uh, we tow this car right now that I'm driving. This is my daily driver. I work 35 miles uh, away from uh, home so you know I'm putting 70 miles a day on the car and so you know this car gets 31 miles to the gallon a little bit more 31.2 is what it's averaging now it says um, a car before this was a little Toyota Yaris uh, it was getting 37 miles to the gallon uh, but it was also getting some mileage on it and I was just you know I like to play it safe I don't want to have to start putting money in into a car and it was, it was time to get a new car it was uh it was eight years old so uh, I don't you know that's that's about the time I'm ready to get rid of a car something new uh, 
but even pulling that car or this car um, I can't hardly tell I mean I know it's back there you should always know that you're towing something and always treat it like you are towing something but um, not nearly as in comparison as driving that big F-250 and pulling a probably a 10,000 pound uh, travel trailer behind you um, we had a good uh, hitch set up we had good uh, uh, sway control but you also knew it was back there um, especially when you know trucks come by come beside you and it would push I mean your, your pivot point is you know you have that pivot point there that it just causes that movement like that um, whereas it's not so much on the on the uh, motorhome the motorhome you're steering the big unit um, you know the bigger part of the unit whereas the uh, truck and trailer the, obviously the trailer for us was the was the bigger unit and the heavier unit so a little bit uh, different or actually a lot to me a lot different uh, than driving the two um, set up at, at going to a park <clears throat> while I had no problem backing up the tra trailer at all uh, you just about need a spotter just every time you know it depends on the park uh, there's some parks that they are wide open the space is wide open and you know not a problem you could get in there but it takes a lot more maneuverability and space to get that thing in there. Um, I hated to rely on other people to help me back in. Uh, my wife would help. You know, all I wanted her to do was just let me know if I was going to hit something. Otherwise, I, I, I wanted to do it myself. I can't stand when these parks send somebody out there and tell you how to park it and trying to tell you what to do. It's just a fiasco. You know, for, for some people, it's... It's, a, it's cumbersome in itself just to uh, do it do it by yourself, you know. But then to have somebody out, else out there trying to tell you what to do, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's no help at all. Backing up the motorhome is a heck of a lot easier. It's uh, uh, like driving a, a car or a truck or backing it in. It's, just, it's a big one, but it's a lot easier. You know, the, our Class C is almost 33 feet long it's 32 foot seven inches long um it's a 31 foot model but it, it's easier this last weekend we went camping i left earlier before my wife could get off work and i got up there backed it right in one time by myself just leveled it and everything by myself we, and we don't have automatic levelers we have you know we do it the same way as we did with our travel trailer we we use the uh, plastic link uh type blocks or wood blocks and you know it's just uh you get that level out and you you figure which way you need to raise the, the tires up and after you do it a while you kind of figure out how many blocks up you need to go and on which side and where and uh you know that that instance i did it one shot boom it was level and uh like i said to me it's a lot easier doing that with a motor home than it is doing with a travel trailer <clears throat> Just doing with the travel trailer then you got to get out go back around to the to you know to the travel trailer. some people's got those big bubble levels on their outside i don't like stuff on the outside of my my units like that um in the motorhome i just get up out of the seat step three or four feet back and um the level i had a level on the countertop and you know if the if, if i can figure out level with the countertop i'm pretty much level uh, the floor, the refrigerator, everything is, is pretty much in line with with the uh, with the countertop there. You know, in uh, in your RV, you probably need to check those things. Check, you know, once you you get what you find is level, put the level on the floor, put it on the countertop, put it on in the refrigerator. You know, you're doing it all mainly for that refrigerator. Um, you want it comfortable also, and a lot of the uh, refrigerators will say you know level two comfort. Um, you know, if you start getting doors that swing open or swing closed and you know your shower if you uh water starts standing on one side you know it become it become a pain in the butt but once you get pretty much level you're you're good to go um another thing is too is if you're uh pulling into a, a park and it's pouring down rain it's a lot easier 
with the motorhome to us, like I said, it's personal preference, to us it's a lot easier that we can pull in and just sit there and wait out the rain. I, I can get up out of the driver's seat and I can walk around to the RV, I can go to the bathroom, I can uh, do whatever I want to do. I can cook something, get something out of the refrigerator, go to sleep. Um, if I'm in the truck and I have a trailer and I'm, uh, it's pouring down rain, I have to get out of the truck, I have to go there, I have to put the steps down, uh, you know, have to lock the door, I have to go in, and you know, it depends, of course, it depends on the RV that you could have to put slides out or, or whatever to be able to maneuver around and, and different things like that. So there's a, just a bunch of different uh, benefits of each. And uh, to us, the, the Class C, or not even the Class C, the motorhome is uh, a lot easier and more comfortable for us. <clears throat> now, one thing that you will find is that uh, if you already have a truck, by all means, look at look at the, tr the trailer. You know, why go out and buy another uh, vehicle uh, to you know to drive around like a motorhome? Um, if you can if you can do it that way, you'll save a heck of a lot of money. Uh, by all means, if you, if you can save money, you know then I'll, then do it. Uh, if money is no option or no option no object. Then you probably will not watching this video anyway but you probably already went and bought your million dollar motor home and you're doing it however you want to do it anyway so uh, you're not really even thinking about it uh, but to us we you know we had the truck in the trailer but we had to trade in a minivan uh, to get that truck and the only reason we needed that truck was to pull the trailer that we bought we bought the trailer first but that's kind of how we wanted to do it we knew we was going to have to get a truck anyway so we got the trailer that we wanted first, and then we figured out what kind of truck we were gonna to need to tow it with, and then got the truck. Um, a lot easier to do it that way for us than it was to buy a truck and then have to uh, result to a trailer that could be towed by that truck. So, uh, another thing to think about when you, uh, you're looking at the you know, truck, don't don't rely on the dealerships whether it's the auto dealership or the RV dealerships don't rely on their numbers do your research do your homework there's a lot of tools online that tell you you know what to do what to look for and how to do it uh, research don't listen to individual people um, as to what they would do or what they would suggest or, or what they're telling you to do figure it out on your own learn how to do it learn what you need to do uh, you'll be a lot happier you'll be a lot more comfortable in, in the long run and I will tell you this too this is my personal preference and this is just from from my experience go with the more utilitarian type RV that you can stand to go with um, based on the type of camping you're gonna do go with the smallest the lightest um, the less uh, things on it uh, because you know now if you're going to be in a resort and you're going to you know and, you, and you're an older person and you want to just stay in a resort full hookups you know you got the shuffleboard and the pool and that's all you're going to be doing and yeah it gets you a nice expensive you know big rig you know with all the fancy doodads on it uh, but if you're, if you're one of these that like to go out and dry camp and boondock, think about that. You know, you don't need a whole bunch on there. Get what you, get what you will need to survive and then, you know, think about, think about other little things. Do I, do you really need this or is there a chance that you might want that later? Then get it. By all means, get it. But the less there is on an RV, uh, the easier it is to pull. Uh, the lighter it is, the better gas mileage you can get all around, you're going to feel a lot better in the long run with it, especially at the beginning. You know, over the years, you, you, your, your uh, mind is going to change. You're going to change your way of camping. You know, we started with a pop-up back in 2000, I think it was. We had it for several years, 
um, we got to a point in our life where, you know, we had a baby and we couldn't, uh, we had to move and we couldn't use it as much. We couldn't use it like we wanted to. And, and uh, uh, it was paid off and everything, but you know, the, the money from selling it served us much better uh, to pay some bills that we needed to pay back then. And uh, that's what we had to do. But, you know, our, our second one was five years ago. Uh, back in 2010 and we bought a, a, a travel trailer you know uh, we almost bought another pop-up then but we bought a, a travel trailer and then we had that for for three years and um, we found ourselves going to the beach most of the time we uh, we're only about three and a half four hours away from Myrtle Beach South Carolina and uh, we found ourselves there a lot we were spending our vacations there you know we even bought a golf cart from them there and you know we were taking our golf cart down there um, and it's a really fun place we really still enjoy it but there are other places we want to go to and other places we we do enjoy so what we end up doing was we end up putting um, the travel trailer in storage there at Myrtle Beach at Ocean Lakes and it was costing us almost exactly the same to keep it in storage there was it, as it was to keep it in storage up here near our house um, it wasn't feasible to keep the the travel trailer in her yard because we uh, we live on a slope and it goes down from the road down to our house and the only place we had to put the the travel trailer was on the side of the house and you know and if we were going to go out on the weekend we had to look at the weather all week long before um, leaving because if it was going to rain anytime near the time we was going to leave we'd go ahead and have to pull it out and put it at the top of our driveway and then it became a uh, kind of a nuisance up there at the top of our driveway for the mailman, for the garbage people, um, other people backing out. We live in a cul-de-sac, so it was just a, a pain in the butt. And then, you know, our truck did have four-wheel drive, and even when it was dry, we had to put the truck in four-wheel drive to pull it out because it was a heavy trailer. I mean, like I said, it was a, it was over 8,000 pounds dry, and, and, you know, my guessment of you know we didn't carry a lot of stuff but my guessment was it was probably about close to 10,000 maybe between 10 and 10,500 pounds of pulling it out so we uh you know we, we didn't even have to pull up four-wheel drive to pull it out um but anyway we we did that we put it in storage at ocean lakes and the neat thing is uh We'd make reservations, and when we make reservations, we tell them, say, "Hey, we want to use our RV that's in your storage." And so, when we would get there to the park, it would already be sitting on our site, and all we had to do was, you know, level it out uh, front to back. It always there were always level side to side because their sites are level. But we, you know, use the electric jack and and raise it up, put the stabilizers out, open the slides, you know, hook up all the hoses, everything, the power, and then start camping. It was really easy, really simple. And then when uh, it's time to leave. We just do the opposite. We close it all up, put the tongue back down low so they, their truck could come by and pick it up. You know, once they saw that it was uh, put away like that and we were gone, they would come by and pick it up and take it, put it back in storage. Uh, very easy. But anyway, we did that and then what we did was I took the truck um, and I traded it in on a SUV for my wife. And uh, she, you know, that truck big f-250 super crew was a big vehicle for my wife to drive around whenever she needed to um it wasn't feasible for me to drive it 70 miles a day back and forth to work uh, i really didn't have a place at work we, we were here in a parking deck and it sat up a little bit high and uh it was much easier for the for me to drive that little toyota yaris i had better on gas mileage too but you know even times when she'd come into town to work into charlotte we would meet somewhere along the way because when I worked night shift back then and uh, we'd meet up some lo somewhere along the way and I'd take the truck and she'd take the Yaris and the work and you know we did a lot of that but you know the, the, the truck wasn't getting a lot of mileage on it and you know it only got used most of the time when we'd go camping which is you know when we could you know weekends here and there or you know maybe one or two weeks a year um, anyway it was just it was uh, just a big waste for us and um, got that SUV for my wife, like a, it was a Ford Explorer, and, uh, what I did was I went and bought a used pop-up, and, uh, bought a 2001 pop-up, uh, Coleman, it was really good condition for its age, um, 
didn't have an air conditioner. That was the only thing that we were not looking forward to. But of course, we've got it really to use to go to the mountains. We're you know we're 30 minutes from the mountains, 30, 45 minutes at the most from the mountains. So what our plans was, we was going to use the pop up for the mountains and use you know go to the beach for the travel trailer. So it was almost like having a vacation home at the beach, and then we'd have the travel trailer just to tow along anywhere we wanted to go. And uh, so you know we got that, got it home and. Uh, aired it out people had mothballs in it before and we you know washed whatever linens we could to try to get the smell out and had it maybe not even a month didn't even get to use it it was right before camping season really started for us and uh, on a whim I went up to the local RV dealership that we bought the travel trailer from and just looked at the class C's that they had and, and uh, came across two one was just a you know regular white one. It was a 28 foot bottle, and then ours, the one that we ended up getting, was a 31 foot model. It had it was the color, the color gel coat, the gray color with the pretty swirls on it. And uh, the floor plan I liked a lot better than the one that we got, and I knew I liked it a lot better. But it was also priced. I want to say it was somewhere between seven to ten thousand dollars more i want to say ten thousand dollars more difference in price and so i went home and got my wife and had brought her back when she got off work and took her and i, and I knew exactly which one she was going to want she, she liked the one we ended up getting of course she picked that one and i went in and talked to the manager um he who was our salesman actually you know a few years before and he ended up being sales manager now and uh he you know, I told him, I said, look, you know, what can you do, do on these for, I mean, the one that we ended up getting, he actually didn't even know that the, he had it in stock. He didn't realize it. So, you know, he, he does a little thing on his computer and, and went back and forth and he came back with a number and he said that, you know, for the white one, he said that he could do it for, I think it was listed for 86,000 MSRP or something like that. And he said he could do it for 69, whatever it was. And I said, well, okay, what about the, the other one? And it was listed at 96000 I remember that specifically. MSRP. And he came back and you know, was looking at his computer and came back and he said, look, I can do that same price, 69000 So we jumped on it. That's a, you know, anytime you go buy an RV, whatever the MSRP, not what their sales price is, but whatever the MSRP they're saying is, expect to get at least 25, 30% off that. That's that's where you, sh you should be in that ballpark. If you get 25%, you should be happy. If you get more than 25%, be very happy. If you get 30%, be ecstatic. You know, if you can get more, by all means. But anyway, we were able to trade in the the travel trailer and the uh, the pop up on it, and uh, uh, they, they paid off our travel trailer for us. You know, we we had that finance. They paid that off for us and uh, took the the pop up and gave us a really good credit for the pop-up more than what I paid for it and uh, we ended up getting a really good deal uh, they went and picked up the travel trailer um, just like when we bought it from them they delivered it down to Myrtle Beach for us and that's that's where we started we started off with it down Myrtle Beach and we ended it down Myrtle Beach so but anyway uh, worked out pretty good for us but uh, you know going back there's nothing wrong with pop-ups either uh, I would do a pop up in a heartbeat if tomorrow something happened financially and we were not able to keep that class c i wouldn't do without rv i mean that's stupid i would definitely definitely go look at another pop-up um, i would prefer a new one but i would do a, a used one again as long as it's in really good condition um but what you know what some of these people want for their used pop-ups that are sometimes a piece of crap is is crazy i mean crazy prices so but anyway uh you know like i said there's there's no one perfect rv there might be a good rv that fits you well but there's the one that's going to fit me well um, you just have to look at those things ask questions by all means ask questions but don't take anybody's word as the gospel it's going to be a learning curve. You're going to uh, have to figure out, you know, the the first one that you buy. Once, you know, like I said, it's the first one. You can 
probably end up buying another one later. And, you know, and it, it may be 20 years down the road. It may be two months down the road. Uh, I have a coworker, and they bought one. They bought, it was a Class A, and I think within two or three months, they were trading it in, getting a bigger one, because it wasn't big enough for them and their grandkids. So, you know, and they, they had that one for, you know, for a good, a good six, seven, eight months, and and then they had some uh, some medical issues they had to deal with, and felt like they weren't probably going to be able to keep that RV, that motorhome. Um, it was a big, it was, I think it was a 34, 35 foot motorhome Class A. It was nice. Um, so they, they consigned it and sold it. And, um, you know, a year or so later, when everything worked out better for them with the, the, the medical issues, they, uh, they went and bought another motorhome. And guess what they bought? They bought a Class C. Um, and he will tell you right now, it's the same size as what I have. It's like a 32 foot uh, Class C. But he says, now this is his opinion. I've never driven a Class A. I've never driven, uh, towed a fifth wheel. I've towed a travel trailer and I've towed a, a pop-up. So I can I can give my expertise on those, but I can't give an expertise on the difference between driving a Class A and a Class C. But according to him, and he's rather tall, he's six foot, six foot two probably. He says the Class C is a lot easier for him to drive um, than that Class A motorhome was. And it's not as fancy as the Class A. It doesn't, you know, Class A had a had all the leveling jacks and all that. His Class C doesn't have all that. But he says that they they found that it feels like it has a similar amount type of room to it, um, and that it's very easy for him to drive compared to the Class A. But that's his opinion. That's not necessarily everybody's opinion. And it might be the difference between the two units. You know, that, that Class A, that maybe there was something wrong with it, or maybe um, it wasn't a, a, a great uh, unit to, to have, you know, compared. So, and there's, you know, and another thing I want to talk about is uh, brands. There is no all-be-all -all brand. All, all brands have great RVs. All brands have crappy RVs. You know, the, the you could say X brand of RV is the greatest ever built. They have the best quality. But for every, you know, 100 units that they build, they're going to have at least one, maybe five RVs that come off the line with problems. So that's going to happen with everyone. So if you, you know, if, if you have one that builds 100 units a year, you may have five problems. If you have one that builds 500 units a year, you may have 25 of them that have problems. It's just, it's, that's the way it's going to work out. They're, you're going to have problems, you know, and that's why they give you a year warranty. Um, or at least they most of the time they give you a year warranty. I think it might be one company out there that gives a two year warranty, but they give you a warranty, you know, to get those things fixed. And, you know, sometimes you can have some uh, major items that need to get fixed, and sometimes you're going to have some. Uh, uh, just little small things. You know, we've never had anything major. All other things were what I would consider small. You know, drawers, the drawer slides, um, uh, the tire valve extenders on my Class C. That's probably the biggest major problem that we had. Um, you know, in the manufacturer I had them replace us. It was it was not an issue, not a problem at all. So you know, yeah, stay on top of that thing. Uh, uh, be realistic on the amount of time it's going to take them to fix it. And, Know, how they're going to fix it and uh, give them the time to do it but also keep on top of them I'm doing it uh, some dealerships are uh, a little bit slow and, and lack the communication skills uh, but if you find a good service advisor like I I have a good service advisor at our local camping world and she's the best and um, you know we have it now I don't even call her I just email her and say look I you know I need to get this done, or I want to get do this, and and she sends me an email back and says, you know, when can you bring it in, and you know, we, we, we kind of work on it like that. So, but anyway, uh, feel free to leave a comment, uh, ask questions, email me from our website. Our website's rvingillustrated.com. Uh, feel free to do, you know, you can hit us up there. Go on Facebook, facebook.com/rvingillustrated. We're on Twitter, 
RVing Illustrate without the D. Uh, we're on Pinterest, and I believe it's RVing Illustrate on there as well. It might be Illustrated, I can't remember, but if you go to our website, you'll see a Pinterest link on there. Um, anyway, give us a thumbs up if you like this video, uh, if you find it informative. If, like I said, if you have any questions, ask questions. And that's how you learn. Um, and uh, be sure to subscribe, and you know, we'll do some more talks like this, especially if you like them. I got a lot of time to talk on my way home from work uh, every day, so just let us know. Anyway, y'all have a good day, and uh, y'all stay safe. Bye. If you like our videos, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.